Hi, I'm Mike Lee with Team Horizon, and this is a Team Tech Tip. In this Team Tech Tip video, we're going to show you how to get your servos to move in unison smoothly and precisely for those flight surfaces that use more than one servo to operate. We call this the servo balancing function. For those pilots who fly large models where the power of one servo is not enough to ensure that you have adequate strength to move the control surface under load, you're going to use multiple servos. For instance, many giant scale aerobatic models use two servos for each aileron and two or three servos to work the rudder. When using multiple servos to operate a control surface, it's not unusual to have one servo not move exactly the same as the next servo due to an unmatched control horn position, incorrect servo put arm position, or just plain unmatched movement between the two servos. In the past, one of the remedies has been a small electronics box placed between the servo and the receiver to get one servo to adjust and match to the other. Or you can just spend a few hours making adjustments to linkage, control horn position, servo output arms, and other things to manually get the servos to match each other. On the Spectrum DX9 and DX18 transmitters, you can take care of this chore using the servo balancing feature of the transmitter. It is fast and easy to do, and we're going to show you the rapid way to accomplish this, but first, a little servo 101 lesson. The current standard in servo technology is the digital servo. The digital servo differs slightly in the electronic side of the construction, but the main point is that the signal used to cause the servo to move is a digital signal that is sent to the servo from the receiver. In the old analog servos, the signal would update the servo 50 to 100 times per second. Digital servos are updated anywhere from 300 to 500 times per second or more. This means that they respond quicker, transit faster, and can hold a much closer tolerance on accuracy and that's where servo balancing comes into play. When you run two servos on the same control surface, you may have one servo trying to fight or overwhelm the other servo because they do not move precisely in unison. The flight control surface may be nice and stiff, preventing any type of twisting from flight stress. also prevents the servos from disagreeing. But when a servo on one end is not in agreement with the other end, one of those servos is going to start buzzing as it tries to hold the position it was commanded to hold. Digital servos are designed to hold a precise position as commanded by the pilot. Being out of position by even a tiny fraction of an inch will cause the servo to try and regain the original position using battery power to get there and thus the buzzing noise. The buzzing sound is, not, is produced by the motor trying to move the servo arm to the precise position and using up your battery power on board. Now that you know what causes the servo buzz and what it does, we can show you how to fix that from the transmitter using the servo balance feature. Here we go. Note that the servo balance feature does not replace the need to be careful about how you set up the servos, control horns, servo arms, push rod linkages, and clevises. The placement is set up the entire control system must be as closely matched as possible. This feature also assumes that you will not be using a Y connection servo wire to join the two servos together on a single plug. The servos must be on a separate channel and must be mixed in together at 100% slave movement to the master servo movement, such that the electronically they start out as a match. Lastly, the servos should be of the same make and model. It is much tougher to match two servos of different capabilities and physical size. Normally, we do not need any additional accessories for our features and functions of the transmitter. But for this operation, we will use one, and this is the Hangar 9 Digital Servo and Receiver Current Meter. It is a simple tool that you will find many other uses for on other projects. One of the main uses will be to see what kind of power draw your model takes in normal operation. But that's another tech tip video. For now, see your local Horizon dealer for this valuable tool. We are back with our servo simulator, and in this video, we have connected two control surfaces to simulate one large control surface. One servo is connected to the normal aileron servo plug on the receiver, and the other is on the auxiliary channel 1. I have already mixed the second servo to the aileron servo to match at 100% motion. If you have a perfect control linkage match at the aileron, you should be fine. All you need to do to find out is to operate the servo. Looks pretty good. Let's go to the extreme. Well, oh, there's the buzzing. Can you hear it? We have a servo buzzing at full throw of the aileron. That means they don't quite match and we have a servo fighting another servo at that position. So to resolve that, we unplug the buzzing servo and plug in the digital servo and its receiver current meter. We now have the meter plugged in. And as you can see, we have it switched to the amps side because I want to reduce the amp draw that's draining my battery. Once plugged in, the meter begins to show the amp draw in milliamps. 
and here we see the draw right there. And as you can see, it's 90 milliamps. That's quite a bit. Now let's bring in the DX18 transmitter and see what we can do to relieve that. We begin by going from the operational screen to the functional list screen. To press the scroll switch once to do that. Scroll down to the servo setup and to press the scroll switch once. Then scroll on over to travel to press the scroll switch once and then scroll through until you get to the balance menu. Here we are balance menu to press the scroll switch once and move to the channel select. And right, right now it's showing throttle. Let's go ahead and depress that switch again and select aileron. Now where was the servo buzzing? As you see here in the monitor we're going to move the stick to the right which is the direction what we had out there and it's right underneath marker number two. So what we want to do is go from the aileron select to marker number two. We can do this by ear or we can do this by meter. Let's do it by ear real quick here. We have the servo in the background buzzing along. We move the stick onto where it's buzzing and hit the scroll switch until it stops. There, it stopped right there. You're balanced right there. That's all there is to it by doing it by sound. Now let's go do it by meter. Doing it by meter is exactly the same way as doing it by sound, except that in this case, once we get to the balance function, instead of listening for the servo to buzz, we're going to watch the meter show a drop in the amperage as we even it out and balance that servo. Here we go. We're going to move that aileron stick on over to where it was buzzing. There it is buzzing, you hear it. And now we're going to start scrolling through until we start seeing a reduction in amps. There it is. Zero. And you've balanced on out right there. Easy as pie. Now there may be multiple places where the servo is not matched and that's where you can use the other points on the curve line to provide a closer match. In this case let's look through those other curve lines here. We're at number two. Depress the scroll switch and move on over to the next one. Depress the scroll switch and now we can start adjusting that one upward whichever way we want in order to satisfy the needs of that particular servo and keep it from fighting the other servo. It's very common to have more than one point in which the servo needs to be satisfied. But that's it to the balance function. You've done it. So we've shown you a good way how to match your servos on a single flight control surface using two servos. That's a pretty easy thing to do with the DX18 and the DX9. Our little friend, the digital servo and receiver current meter, is going to be a valuable tool to you as it also is capable of reading other type of problems for you and that's another tech tip video in the near future so stay tuned for that. I hope that you've enjoyed our team tech tip and allowed you to learn even more from the Horizon team. Stay tuned for more tips, tricks and techniques from the team in the near future. I'm Mike Lee for Team Horizon and you just got yourself a team tech tip. Thanks for watching.